right? So now we'll go back to a concrete example, all right? So, so here, let me tell, as I go through, I'm gonna tell you the paragraphs to write on your solution, all right? Because um, you will have to do one of these. And um, if, if I had a test for every unit, then you would have one hard question about greedy, but now it's gonna be in within a bunch of tests, but, so each of them will be a little easier, but you'll still need these paragraphs, right? In fact, chances are, if I wanted to get you to do it fast, the problem itself will be quite easy. And what, what you'll have to do is quickly write down the paragraphs, right? So the, the first paragraph, well, you certainly need to say what the algorithm is. And maybe I even give you the algorithm, right? And now we want to prove that the algorithm works, right? So we say the loop invariant is that the algorithm has, has made the decisions a uh, t minus one, and we're and uh, we know there exists a solution s t minus one that's valid and consistent and optimal, right? And uh, let's assume the fair godmother has it, and let's give it a name a s s t minus one, right? Then the algorithm, right? Uh, all right, here's just the algorithm again, right? We saw the, everybody remember what the algorithm is? All right, so the algorithm, right? Oh, we're just saying slides. All right, so here, so we, we now we've jumped into the middle of the algorithm and the algorithm, then you can say, let, let a t minus one be what the algorithm has done so far. Right? And I always like a picture. So draw a picture of what it might look like. Right? And then, then we say, well, by the loop invariant, let um, s t minus one be a solution that extends it and is valid and ideally is optimal. Right? Now, right? And then, uh, at time t, the algorithm commits to another quarter, right? And now we have to see, see the purple is her solution. The light green and the dark green are, are the algorithms, what it's done so far. And we have to design a, a, a purple, right? A new solution. And we have to change her solution because it's not consistent with what the algorithm did. Right, let's, for, let's assume these quarters are different, right? So in this case, what do we get her to do? She just swaps the quarters, right? She, we get her to drop this quarter and take that quarter, right? Everybody see that? That was easy, right? Quarters are different, right? We, we massage ST minus one into ST, right? And, uh, we need then after in this case we we have a paragraph that says well in this case we change swap the quarters we know it's still valid why it still adds up to ninety two cents it's still optimal because it has the same number of coins right it it extends what the algorithm has done because we didn't change the earlier coins and we fixed the new coin right everybody get this easy example. All right, so we did that and life is good. All right, so, so now let's do things in more general, right? Because there's so many, we don't know what the optimal solution is holding, right? So all we know is that her solution adds up to 92 cents and we know 50 cents of it because she has this quarter and this quarter and that leaves there's 42 cents at large that we don't know about, right? And so we're gonna do proof by cases, right? So, and, and because there's so many weird cases, in fact, this guy, this proof is hard because there's so many weird cases, I'm gonna build a tree of cases, right? And so my first 
question. I can you can think about it as a question to the fairy godmother, right? I know that you have at least 25 cents that I don't know about. Do you have another quarter? Yes or no, right? And she says, yes or no. If she says yes, then we know we do what we just did, right? If she says no, then I can ask, how many dimes do you have? You either have zero, one, two, or more than two, three or more, right? And then I can ask, how many nickels do you have, right? And then I can ask, how many pennies do you have? Um, right? I don't know, lots. Then, all right, so let's do all these examples, right? If she says she has a different quarter, then we swap it with our quarter, right? Uh, if she says she has three dimes, what do we do with them? Throw away the dimes and replace it with a quarter, which quarter? The, uh, no, with the algorithm's quarter. The whole point is to get the algorithm's quarter, right? We drop the three dimes, replace it with the algorithm's quarter and another nickel, right? And you'll know that it still adds up to 92 cents, so it's valid. It's, it's more optimal than it was before, right? Because we dropped three coins and added two coins, right? Why are we considering this case? Well, because we got to make sure we handle all the cases, right? This is a case to consider. Everybody get that? Right? If she has two quarters, then maybe she has a bunch of nickels, right? Maybe she has more nickels. Maybe she has a bunch of pennies, right? But either way, we can drop some things and replace it with her quarter plus some change, right? Everybody see that? Yeah? Right, so now we've, in this table here, we had a paragraph describing how we change things, right? Now we need a paragraph which said, why is what she have valid? Well, don't just say, because it was valid and I didn't mess it up. You have to know what valid means, right? I did introduce new conflict, right? Well, the, in this case, you go back to the problem and see what does valid mean? It means that it adds up to 92 cents. Well, in all my changes, I made sure I didn't mess that up. Right? So it still adds up to 92 cents. We need to prove that it extends what the algorithm has. Well, it used to extend what the algorithm has, and we made sure we didn't mess up the previous decisions, and we fixed the new decision. Right? We need to prove that it's optimal, or at least as good as what the fairy godmother had. And what's optimal is the number of coins. And you'll see... In each case, the number of coins either goes down or stays the same, right? So if it was optimal, it's at least as good as it was before, right? Does that make sense? Everybody good? And we've done that, so that maintains the loop invariant, right? Everybody see how we've maintained the loop invariant? All right, for a loop invariant algorithm, what do we still have to do? We have to establish the loop invariant and we have to get the post condition. All right. Oh, that was just case one. Case two is she has 75 cents, the algorithm has 75 cents. And the fairy godmother has something consistent with that. And what does the algorithm do? It rejects the next quarter, right? 
So do you know what the fairy godmother did? Could it have could she have taken another quarter? No. The algorithm rejected the quarter because it did, wasn't consistent with what the algorithm had done before. And the fairy godmother has done those same things before. So she too cannot have taken that quarter, right? Everybody see that that case is, is easy, right? And then we would also have to do the cases of a dime and nickel and a penny, but, but that's good, right? Lots of cases, we're gonna ignore them. All right. How do you establish the loop invariant? Hmm? At the very beginning, yeah, you know I love zero, right? Very beginning, what has the algorithm done? Nothing, right? So the question is, what are we asking for? Initially, the algorithm has done nothing, right? Um, oops, right? So, so if there's a solution, I mean, it's possible there's a problem where there are no solutions, right? But assuming there's a solution, there's an optimal solution. And any of those, each and every one of those optimal solutions is consistent with what the algorithm has done so far. Why? Because the algorithm hasn't done anything yet. Right? Everybody get that? All right, how do we get the post condition? Well, the exit condition, it says that the algorithm has made a decision about each object, right? And so um, the solution, his solution at the end is equal to what the fairy godmother has, right? It's a full solution. Well, it is a full solution, right? And the loop invariant says that the fairy godmother is holding a solution that's consistent with that. So the fairy godmother must be holding the same solution, right? And, and, and that's optimal. So we're done. Everybody good? And that's it, all right? That was the proof. All right, so, so now, any questions about the proof? Uh -huh. Have you changed it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here are the paragraphs. How do I change it? Then, then you have to say it st minus one was valid, so st will still be valid. St st minus one was optimal, so it will still be optimal. It was consistent with what the algorithm had done, so it will still be. Yeah. And we're gonna go over and over them. All right, so let's do this example now. Oops, we went all the way to the end. We know we didn't want to do that. Um, let's go to event scheduling. All right, so in, remember this example. Right, so we've already proven that this algorithm doesn't work, right? But let's pretend that we didn't notice that and we were trying to prove that it does work, right? So we would say, um, well, at the very beginning, the fairy godmother is holding an optimal solution, right? There is an optimal solution. And then the algorithm, commits to a quarter, a, a four cent coin, right? And now we have to tell her how to change her solution three, three to include the four without increasing, the, without changing what it adds up to and without increasing the number of coins, right? And that's, we can't do that. 
right? Everybody see that? All right, what's the running time? You sort them and log in and then you run through them fast, right? Everybody good? How are we doing for time now? 10 minutes. Any questions about anything? I think the answer is yes. I think it's next week and then I'm going to the cottage. I'll let you know. Um, yeah. It just doesn't work, yeah. Yeah, so in this case, what you would do is say, here's an input where the answer it gives is wrong, right? Um, so uh, 